Hi, I'm Dr. Lee from Your Vet Online, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking all about vitamin A deficiency in our cattle. Now, it's one of those things that occurs primarily when there is a drought. So, for any of you that are in drought conditions, this is the tutorial to take a listen to. I'm going to be talking all about how cattle can get vitamin A deficiency and how we can prevent this and also treat it if we find that we do have some animals that have this problem. So listen up. Unlike many vitamins that are actually produced in the rumen of um, cattle, vitamin A is a little bit different. Cattle require vitamin A via carotene from plants and then it is converted into vitamin A in the small intestine. So if they're not getting any vitamin A from plants, well carotene from plants, there's no opportunity to actually convert that into vitamin A in the small intestine. Vitamin A is crucial for vision, maintenance of epithelial and mucous membrane structures, bone development, and of course, the immune system. One thing that's pretty different about vitamin A is it, it because it's fat soluble, it can actually be stored in the liver. And that means that if your animal is getting enough vitamin A, then storage is possible. They do need to be getting at least three to five times more than what they require per day to allow storage to occur. Mature cows can actually store up to about four months supply. When green pick is plentiful, cows and cow cattle just don't have any problems storing vitamin A. But that's not what we're seeing at the moment. So with these droughts, um, we often have seen cattle that have not seen grass for at least three years and of course there are some calves or yearlings that may never have seen green grass at all in their whole entire life. That means liver storage is probably big fat zero. You also need to remember that in drought conditions the carotene content of plants is a lot poorer. So regardless, even if you do find access to some good haze and things like that, if they've come from an area that is drought prone or has been in drought, the quality of the carotene in that uh, hay is likely to be a lot less. So then we have to be really careful about what we're doing as far as our supplement pro supplementation programs are going. Also, don't forget that drought stressed uh, haze can also have a higher level of nitrate in them and if that's the case remember that nitrate can actually affect the way carotene is um, broken down and transformed into vitamin A. So what are the clinical signs that we see with vitamin A deficiency? So there's those things that are kind of what I call um, not specific so we've got our rough coat, our decreased feed intake, potentially a lower growth rate. See those things we, we might contribute that contribute those to just poor quality feed. However, they are also signs of vitamin A deficiency. However, the big one that many of you may have noticed is that with vitamin A deficiency we do see signs of blindness. Now often we call this night blindness and that's primarily just because we see the signs during the night time. So if we're trying to move stock when the light level of light is a lot lower, you do seem to notice this more frequently. You can see other signs like diarrhea, seizures, unusual gaits, you know they like might be a bit high stepping. That could be related to them not being able to see very clearly as well. But yeah, it's primarily that night blindness and often their eyes can change a bit of a colour and they can get that sort of greenish grey hue about them. You might see quite a few more stillborn births. Uh, you also might get abortions, like late term abortions if your cattle, if your cows are actually deficient in vitamin A. Now if your cattle then actually go through and give birth to cows that are deficient in vitamin A, 
Those calves are often show signs of microphthalmia, so they have the blindness, they often have seizures, diarrhea, their immune function is kaput. Often they don't even survive 48 hours. So it's absolutely crucial, as you can see, that we need to start supplementation. So there's a couple of ways we can supplement for vitamin A deficiency. Number one is using a premix that contains vitamin A and then you add that to the feed. And number two, is to actually use an injectable solution. And the one that we recommend is Troy Animal Health's vitamin A, D and E injection. So let's just talk a little bit about vitamin A in our premixes. So one of the most important things to remember is that vitamin A is actually fat soluble. And that means that it is a highly oxidizable product and it doesn't last very long. And so what this means is that if you're using it in a premix, you can't keep a whole lot of that premix on hand because it may become denatured. Now, the other thing to remember also is that as soon as you put that premix out um, in the feed into the sun, then it can also um, decrease its potency, the vitamin A aspect of it, the potency can decrease as well. So it can be quite hard to determine how much vitamin A is actually in that premix that you're providing to your animals. Um, I always recommend that if you're going to, if we say that an animal needs, say, 10,000 international units, then you're going to put 15,000 in there just to increase the levels so that you know that you can cater for any of those losses due to oxidization. We don't have to worry about any of those sorts of things if we are going to use an injectable product such as Troy Animal House Vitamin A, D and E injection. We recommend that cows and cattle be injected with about 1 million to 1.5 million international units per head per month if it is in drought conditions. The thing that's really concerning is that often these cattle have no storage of vitamin A in their liver as we've already mentioned. So we, giving them one injection is not going to be enough and sometimes we actually need to do a little bit of trial and error to work out how much we are needing to give these cattle beasts. Now, if your animals are not showing signs of vitamin A deficiency, then you might be able to get away with giving that 1 to 1.5 million international units per head once a month. What we're seeing with some of the animals that may be showing all these clinical signs is that we're actually having to give that far more often. In some animals, it's every two weeks. And I know this is a hassle, However, it's the most effective way of getting those levels of vitamin A increased into their bloodstream, which can then be stored in the liver. Coming up to calving season, it's vitally important because we want those cows to have enough vitamin A so that they can actually give some to their cows, calves when they're born. Okay, so let's just talk about calves for a little bit. Now, if they're going to be born to cattle that have never seen green pick and realistically have no vitamin A reserves in their liver, then they too are going to be born absolutely depleted of and deficient of vitamin A. Okay, so if you've got a calf that's born and it looks like it's got microphthalmia, it might be extremely weak, its bones are maybe deformed, it's just not looking good, you're probably better off just cutting your losses right then and there because the vitamin A deficiency has occurred some time back during the development of that calf and whatever you give now is not going to do a thing. However, if you've got calves born that are looking pretty good, um, but they're born to mothers that have not had vitamin A, then I'd be getting in there straight away and giving them an injection of vitamin A, D and E immediately. Give, give them about 500,000 international units and then you it's quite possible you're going to have to keep doing that every two to three weeks. It's annoying, yes I know, but at least you're going to end up having a calf that will survive 
and we can get them onto some green pick as, as it becomes available. A lot of the supplementation of vitamin A and what we need to do is just theoretical at the moment. We actually have what we're experiencing now hasn't occurred before. So there's a lot of guesswork involved. But I guess as if we, if we go back to working on first principles, we want to make sure that any animal that hasn't been had access to green grass, we know there's going to be no carotene there, so we know that they're going to be vitamin A deficient, so we know we're going to supplement. So you're either going to have to supplement with a premix and make sure that you talk to your nutritionist in that respect and make sure that you've got enough vitamin A in that premix so that when it's fed in the feed, it's not going to be denatured by the environment quickly. So you're going to have to give, if the requirement is here, you're actually going to put, have to put that much in to make sure that when they depletes, they're still getting enough. Otherwise, you're going to use the Troy Animal Health Vitamin A, D and E injection. And that's going to be probably a monthly injection for your older cattle. And for your new, you know, your new calves, you're going to be doing that every two to three weeks. Now, I know, it's a lot of work. Um, there's not a lot else we, we have out there available, unfortunately. And um, so it might be a good idea to do a mix, do your pre-mix plus your injectables. And just remember though that your calves are not going to be eating eating that hay or eating that grain and premix until they've got a developed rumen and, and you're going to have to do that slowly over time so the calves are going to be the ones that are going to need this uh, injectable straight up. It's really important that you remember that if your cows and calves are deficient in vitamin A they're likely going to be really deficient in quite a few other things. So the things that we're sort of looking at are things like zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, um, vitamin E, although vitamin E is often added, um, was added in the vitamin A, D and E injection. But yeah, it's worthwhile noting that. So what I would recommend that you all do is get a sample of your cattle um, that were, will be near calving, get them all in, take a sample from you know, a good six of them or so, have their livers sampled and work out exactly what your mineral and vitamin balance is. And then you can make sure that you can, you're supplementing for what they require. And you're not just throwing money away by giving them things at a guess. It's all about cost effective supplementation. All right then guys, this is the end of the tutorial on vitamin A deficiency. I hope you found that interesting and worthwhile. If you have any questions whatsoever, just pop them in down below and I will endeavour to answer them. Other than that, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and subscribe to our channel. I'm Dr. Lee from Your Vet Online. You have a great day.